Today, I want to talk to you about a double abounding. I'm going to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, where we read this. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. There are some people who feel a need to exaggerate their trials, their difficulties. For them, nothing small ever happens to them. Every inconvenience is a heavy cross to bear, and they suppose that they bear it for Jesus. The Apostle Paul was not that kind of man. He spoke about his suffering reluctantly and in understated terms. The Corinthian Christians, with their worldly attitudes, frustrated Paul to the point where he would speak about his trials. So when Paul wrote, the sufferings of Christ abound in us, he meant it. Paul had a life filled with sufferings, abounding in suffering. He described some of those sufferings in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. He talked about stripes, that is the mark of whips on his back. Prisons, beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, perils of waters, robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Now, friends, that's abounding sufferings. You see, but in all of that, Paul knew that all of his sufferings were really the sufferings of Christ. It's a striking statement. We almost want to correct the apostle. Paul, those are your sufferings, not the sufferings of Christ. Get it straight. Nevertheless, Paul's life was so completely identified in Jesus that if he was blessed, it was the blessing of Christ. If he suffered, then they were the sufferings of Christ. Now, let's be clear. Not every trial we face can truly be thought of as the sufferings of Christ. Some trials we stupidly bring upon ourselves. I read one time about a woman named Heather, a 29-year-old woman from England, who decided that she found a cure for an ailment that left sufferers permanently exhausted. Doctors refused to implement her plan, so she decided that drilling a hole in her head, that's a headache treatment from the Middle Ages, would do the trick. So she performed the procedure on herself in front of a mirror. And despite drilling too deeply and nearly puncturing her own brain, she said that she had no regrets. But listen, nobody should think that that lady suffered for Jesus. (laughs) She was sadly mistaken, and nobody should do such a thing. But Peter knew the distinction between the two kinds of suffering when he wrote that we should not suffer as a murderer, a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, Peter said, this is in 1 Peter chapter 4, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Paul knew something about the glory of God in suffering. In fact, Paul knew both sides well. He knew the sufferings and the consolation. He could say this, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Because Paul's sufferings were the sufferings of Christ, Jesus was not distant from Paul in any trial. He was right there, identifying with the apostle and comforting Paul. It seems like the hotter the day, then the greater is the dew that comes at night. Even so, the hotter the time of trouble, the greater is the dew of refreshing from God. Friends, we can count on it. When sufferings abound, consolation also abounds. Jesus is there to bring comfort if we will receive it. So the principle stands. Our consolation also abounds through Christ. God may allow situations in our life where our only consolation is found through Christ. Sometimes we think that the consolation is found in a change of circumstances, but God wants to console us right in our difficult circumstances and to do it through Christ. 
Jesus told us the same principle in John chapter 16, verse 33. It says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So dear friend, are sufferings abounding in your life right now? Be bold enough to seek God for abounding consolation. And you can do that today.